Hello, this is Jay Spillers with Inspire Me with Jay. My special guest today is Brian Kelly. Brian, how are you? I'm good, Jay. Thank you so much for having me. So tell us about your story. So, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, my story starts, well, actually, it's a very unique one. Um, I was diagnosed with a very rare disorder called propionic acidemia. It's a metabolic dis genetic disorder um, where I, that's, it also a enzyme deficiency. So my body has a hard time breaking down um, organic acts and pro certain proteins. Um, back when I was in the hospital, they didn't know what I had, and I ended up suffering a metabolic stroke from it. Um, I was never supposed to walk or talk, um, but but luckily God has given me the ability to do so. Um, I also have cardiomyopathy and stage two kidney disorder, and I've always been a pretty positive guy. And then in 2012, I ended up getting um, Lyme disease on top of it. And kind of since the Lyme disease came with the probiotic, I've been getting um, very intense high ammonia flats, which, is, which can cause very bad brain fog and um, very bad uh, muscle soreness. And I got into meditation and mindfulness because I went to every doctor. The doctors that I see down at Children's Hospital for my probiotic alphabemia. I went to infectious disease, nephrology, and none of them could actually tell me um, kind of the solution. They would just put me on doxycycline, which is essentially the the antidote for Lyme, and that never did the trick. And as soon as I developed a, a mindfulness meditation practice, I don't want to see, I'm, I'm saying I'm terrible, but I think stress triggers a lot of elements. And the fact that I'm not thinking about it constantly definitely improves the symptoms. Wow, oh, that's good. So, um, do you do you do anything uh, specifically with meditation? I do. Um, I am a meditation teacher. I just launched about a, m a month ago. Um, originally, I took the class. I took a class for myself, and to the one to learn the ins and outs of it for my own being. But now I want to kind of spread the wealth around because it's an amazing tool. Um, just launched last month, just trying to get myself out a, a little bit. Um, I, I work with patients one-on-one -on -one for the most part. Um, I do, I will be having a workshop coming up in a couple months. Um, I deal with it. Anyone who has mental health issues and anxiety or disability. And I start off with um, giving them kind of a, they can tell me the, um, the story and then based upon what they tell me, we can develop a meditation plan, so to speak. Oh, that's pretty cool. So how long did this class take for you to become a meditation teacher? Uh, it, it probably took me, I would say, about, it was done online. Um, it would say, it took me about six months to complete. And I'm still learning, like, I, I'm always, I don't think you can ever learn it all, you know? Mm -hmm. There's this infinite knowledge to it. So, in terms of meditation, it gives you greater peace and um, stability in life. 
Um, what other qualities has meditation provided for you? Um, like I, I like I said, the um overthinking was a big thing for me, and um, I think becoming aware of becoming aware of my pain and trying not to become it, like catching um kick the pain before it starts. Really was a big thing for me. So, um, do you have a lot of physical pain in your body? Um, I have flops that occur every couple of months that if I push, if I overexert myself, they get a lot less, yes. Because hmm. I have heard that meditation can help to reduce physical pain in your body. Those that suffer it with traumatic pain. I think, yeah, I think because you're not focusing on the pain, you're focusing on either on your breath or visualization, whatever it is that you choose to meditate on, you're focusing on that, not so much on the pain. So when you, when you meditate, uh, what do you tend to focus on? I tend to do, um, I'm a big, I'm big into manifestation. I always like to uh, kind of manifest my, my next goal in life. Um, I do usually 15 minutes of that in the morning and then um, gratitude. Uh, being thankful for the little stuff, you know. We have so much thing, there's so much to be thankful for. Hmm. Do you listen to any kind of meditation music or do you just do it silently? I usually find some uh, just music on that they have meditation music on YouTube. Hmm. I think that really helps. Yeah, I've actually found or if the mm -hmm. go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah, I find all the meditation music I use on YouTube. There's literally thousands of different things you can listen to in terms of music. Or if the weather is nice outside, is the best. Because you, you truly ground it with the earth. Hmm. So how, how much time do you spend each day meditating? Uh, on my normal routine, it's 45 minutes. I do 15 minutes in the morning. And then you hold, you, if I have the time, I do that. How how every night, so. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Ideally, right before I go to bed. So. Yeah, so you said with people that you work with, you do individualized plans. How would some of the right. plans vary between person to person? Like you might give one person one plan and another another, but how does it vary in terms of specializing? A meditation plan. Um, so someone might come to me about um forgiveness, maybe they're in a bad relationship, and then we go down the being. Obviously, it all comes back to uh, I'm a mindfulness teacher and a meditation teacher, so mindfulness is part of my uh thing too. Um, we go down the uh, loving kindness, which is um showing being able to kind of forgive a person even when they've done you wrong because it helps you kind of heal yourself so to speak and or if there was a person that would come to me just for the spiritual aspect of it then that would be a whole other dilemma. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of different things that people could, anxiety is one. Um, I took a neurologistic program class that is great for anxiety, but I think 
meditation helps, uh, then I would kind of use, use that with, you know, what you're saying out of positive self-talk, talking good about yourself, so important. So just several different things. Mm -hmm. So you have a spiritual base to your meditation, it sounds like. Do um, I do. What What is your spiritual base or belief, if you want to sh share? Um, so that's very interesting. When I was growing up, I was never um, super religious. I was never, I never really went to church, but... When the Lyme disease came, and especially when the virus hit, I I lost my job because the um I lost a grocery store, and with all my health elements, I the health my health wasn't worth the uh, risk, and I started taking a a lot of courses, and honestly, I I, I use a bunch of different religions. To kind of, um, I'm really into Buddhism, Stoicism, and the philosophy that I like to use. Um, just a bunch of, yeah, I like to take a little bit of each religion to kind of put it into my own life. Yeah, and I talked about with other guests about how virtually every religion has meditative practice in it. You know, because Christianity. They do. They do. And, it's just like in a different way. Yeah. So I guess within your tradition, you can focus on anything you want in terms of like, if you're a Christian, you could focus on meditating on Christ and being Christ like. Or, you know, if you're coming from a Buddhist background, you might meditate on more enlightenment or things like that. But, you know, there'd be a lot of similarity. Yeah, I mean, I like to think of God as the universe. So I meditate to, I meditate to the all the energy that the universe has. Mm -hmm. well, I guess what you talked about, like specializing meditation towards the issue that they're focused on. As you practice meditation over a lifetime, you have different issues that come up in your life. So I guess you could sort of exactly. tailor it then. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I said, I think that's um, kind of what, I, what my my plan is to um, kind of give them a four week trust, a four week thing. Uh, pay pay uh, for what that's and if they want to continue, they. You know, can continue and so. Mm -hmm. I also do uh, free diet meditations every two weeks, just on a general topic like happiness, gratitude, just to give that back. You know. Do you get a lot of the guided meditations from YouTube? Ah, uh, no, I do. I mean. I, I, I usually write my own. They're generally only uh, about 10 minutes long because people are very quick and busy. Um, mm -hmm. So, but it's, good, it's a good way to uh, start off the morning. Hmm. Do the people you work with, you uh, start them off with guided meditations and try to get them to go on their own at some point? Yeah, um, I would start them off with a diet meditation for probably the um, first couple, or at least the first lesson, uh, and then, um, you know, to, I think starting small, like five minutes a day, is usually the, the right amount, because I think when you first do it, there are and a lot of thoughts that come and go, and you it takes a lot focus to be able to control that but with anything as you practice it, you get better and better hmm. so does meditation for you sort of 
center and ground you? Yeah, um, absolutely. It also helps me kind of, uh, I try to be, obviously we can't be present all the time, but I try to do like many meditations throughout the day. I don't necessarily require me to sit down on just kind of focus on my breath for a couple of seconds. Um, really helped me um, kind of ground myself and, you know, not react to certain situations as I would sometimes. Hmm. Yeah, because you said mini meditations. I actually uh, do mini meditations too. And I, I teach mini meditations for like a minute to three minutes and, you know, just go from there. I mean, yeah, you can even check in for yourself to as good as one minute. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you ever focus on uh, certain objects? Like, if you're outside, you focus on a, a something in nature, like a tree or a flower, and sort of oh, that. Uh, well, uh, yeah. So walking and meditation big for me. Um, I go for a walk for a, try to go for a walk a half hour every day when I just try to focus not so much on my thoughts but um kind of like the beauty around nature, you know, the the scenery, the birds, the smells. Sometimes I just close my eyes and appreciate the first air. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Do you do yoga too? I do do yoga. Um, that's actually, I found yoga before I found meditation. I didn't actually, I didn't know that uh, the two were intertwined. Um, I discovered yoga with Adrian on YouTube and fell in love with her practice because some of my physical elements don't allow me to exercise. Like I have a hard time like lifting weights and going for runs and stuff like that. But I find with yoga, I, I, it's not necessarily about how well you do it. It's enjoying the you know, it's connecting with your breath and also a great workout. Hmm. Yeah, because I saw on your profile page, I saw a video where you were in a yoga class or something. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I do yoga almost every day. Um, at, like I, I think I mentioned I had, I had a chance to meet yoga with Adrian live and I do... I do at home, and I also take a class every now and again. Hmm. So is there a close connection between yoga and meditation, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think both are very similar. It's both about connecting with the breath and being present, you know. Um, if you're not completely present, you're not going to be able to do that yoga pose. It really has full attention. Yeah, I always thought another process that looks kind of like yoga is Tai Chi. I don't know if you've ever tried. Tai I've chi. heard of that, but I've never, I never gotten into that yet. Hmm. I know the movements are slow; they're kind of connected with martial arts. But sometimes I found some of the, the movements to be kind of difficult to do, but it is slower and kind of meditative. I also took a uh, kickboxing class for a couple of years, and that was a great mind. Any activity that is when you're physically, physically swinging your body is a good way of being mindful. Hmm. But it's I, I I also think um certain um boy certain like boy games uh, it's been on into I think that's a good way to be 
completely present in the moment, trained and aligned at all. I play a lot of chess. Hmm. I get a chance to do uh, board games a lot because my son likes it. He's eight years old. He likes to do board games. Right. Does kickboxing have all the same elements as regular boxing? They just incorporate the feet? Yes. So, yeah. So you're, you're a meditation teacher right now. And um, are there any other projects you're working on? Uh, so I'm always trying to, um, I'm always constantly, uh, that's kind of been my new addiction. Um, I'm always, um, I would like to learn um, Reiki one day. That's kind of my next goal. Um, and then um, I'm going to, once you clear what I love, I, I want to do a couple of in-person meditations. Um, to the public, for your charge, just kind of to uh, give back. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, so thanks for coming on the show. Um, is there anything you want to leave the audience with before we close out? Um, you can reach me at bepresentlifestyle.com. I'm also on Instagram, bepresentlifestyle. Uh, Twitter and Facebook all on Be Present Lifestyle. Um, if you need any guidance in on your mindfulness or meditation adventure or spiritual adventure, let me know and I'll be more than willing to help you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for that. Thank you so much.